Hey folks, welcome back. We got this uh, 2007 Dodge in here with a 6.7 Cummins and uh, got a squealing exhaust brake. I don't know if you're going to be able to hear it from in here or not, but just every time. Now going down the road, you know, when I step on the pedal to accelerate it, it doesn't, uh, you don't quite hear it. You let off of it. And then it makes some kind of that so, sort of noise or something when you know, but it's actually working and doing its job. Hey, I'm not sure how that picked up on the camera for sure as far as the noise goes, but if you're having a noise that's associated with your exhaust brake, uh, you're going to notice it. Um, I had one, oh, last year or year and a half ago that had a noise. Um, now, it would only do it. It was a little bit newer. I think it was a 2010 or 11. Um, it would only do it driving like when you let off your pedal like you're using the exhaust brake any other time at idle or normal driving you wouldn't hear it um, like I said this one is doing it here at idles first one I've seen doing that way um, anyways to get this thing figured out okay so now this thing has been sitting here for about 45 minutes or so um, and I'm going to uh, Go ahead and uh, start this thing up and we'll turn that uh, exhaust brake on there and see if it's going to be doing the same thing. And then we'll <clears throat> also going to try a couple of other things. I can kind of hear it. Okay, it's not as pronounced, but I don't know if the camera's gonna pick it up or not, but right now it's off, so I'm gonna hold the camera out close as the inch I can as I do this. Um, push this button. And it probably gets more pronounced it you know it was louder when this thing was uh, more warmed up so we're gonna go in and do I think we're gonna get hook a scanner up to it and then we're gonna go in and um, we're gonna actuate that variable van I hope you can do that you can do that on like the um, six liter Fords, which, you know, the Fords are what I'm more familiar with. Um, but you can do that and you can actuate that variable vein and we're going to see if, uh, what kind of changes go from there. Um, 
because I've had these noises before with being um, exhaust leaks. You know, whether it's it's the actual exhaust manifold. You know, sometimes I've seen broken bolts, just bad gaskets and whatnot. Um, this one doesn't appear to have any of that. We do have some soot, a little bit of soot showing up right there. Um, this is above the exhaust manifold into this EGR cooler. Um, it just seems to me that uh, at such a, you know, with just this thing idling, um, the last one I had in here, it had a leak back there in the same spot. It was it was a similar noise, but you could only get it to act up uh, when it was warmed up and driving, you know, and then turning the exhaust brake on and letting it letting it work. That was the only time you get it. this one here is a new one for me um, about having this thing, you know, actuate or make that that noise that pronounced. Uh, just at idle when you turn the exhaust brake on and off. So, anyways, we're going to get the scanner hooked up and we'll see what we can figure out from there. Okay, right, first we're going to go in and look in codes and just see what we can find. Uh, there's a damaged wiring from the uh, fan, so I know that that code should be in here. Yeah, that's... That's, but there's nothing else that has anything to do with um, the uh, turbo actuator or anything like that, so. Okay, so sometimes it's, can be hard to pinpoint exactly what's, you know, going on. Do we have some kind of a deal going on with the actuator? This is one I've never had do this before with uh, it, it at idle like this, um, this pronounced. Um, but anyways, I've got some, already got some, you know, block off plates that I've made just for this type of a deal. What we're going to do is going to pull the, this EGR cooler off of here. Um, you know, I got the antifreeze draining right now, and then we're just going to take a hose. We're going to loop it from here. Um, just kind of attach it to this hose somehow or another, or attach it in, into this hose. Just going to loop it from here to here. And then, um, you know, gonna undo the EGR cooler from right here, back there, this clamp, and then um, get it out of here. This we're gonna take off, just leave plugged in. Then, then we're gonna take this clamp off and get this all out of the way. There's another spot right in here. We can put a block off plate right here and right there. And then we're just gonna run this thing, let it warm up a little bit and see what it sounds like then um, because that's gonna eliminate all of this out here which I don't believe it's anything past here because it's all making the noise um, I was taking this piece of hose right here up to my ear and pointing it around and I mean it is so pronounced right here and I just can't see in there good enough I got the fender well out and everything and I just can't see in there good enough but it don't look like any of these exhaust manifold deals are leaking the only thing that shows any sign of leaking is, is that right there but it's real quiet back over there does that mean it could still be in the turbo and then it's it's just pronounced out here because of the way the noise travels. Yes, it can be. This is, you know sometimes these can be pretty pretty hard to find um, at any rate. But that's what we're gonna do first. So we'll keep on going. Okay, so we got our uh, EGR cooler removed out of there. So, you know it's gonna be a temporary thing for this pickup or whatever. Um, but. You know, we got a block off plate. I, I actually, I didn't make that. I had it from somewhere, probably from, uh, I got another one up here, probably from a, um, you know, uh, old manifold or something like that. I worked on it on it floating around. So anyways, um, we are going to, uh, you know, start and run this thing and uh, see if that noise and you know, stuff like that all comes back. So keep going. Yeah, so actually this thing's a lot louder without that EGR cooler on there. Um, and without it on there, I can also get down in here and see, and I don't know if it's going to show up in the camera very good at all, but um, there's soot, big old soot trail coming right off the middle of this exhaust manifold. 
And then um, I think this side right here, I really wish these LEDs weren't so bright. Well, some days these vehicles will receive my blood, sweat, and tears. And I mean that literally. Bleeding all over the place before I realized it. All the joys. Well, I don't know if I mentioned this before. Now, I mean, this obviously this is how it can can come off. You know, the turbo does not have to come out of there. Um, but it do just, you know, loosen like this to get it have enough play to go because that bolts onto a stud bolts on one of the manifold that lower manifold bolt right there has got a stud on it just like the ones that have studs here to hold that heat guard on but uh, it's really not too bad i like to just drain the coolant enough to to get all this stuff off of here and get it up out of the way and everything um <clears throat> now i did do one of these um you know what, oh, I was going to mention, these these two right here were the ones that were, uh, these two right here were the ones that were leaking. You can see how they got the soot in between here and everything. So the wrist right here is where our leak was. And, <coughs> excuse me, I did have an instance where, you know, we cleaned all one of these up, even put a straight edge on it and all that to make sure that this thing wasn't like warped and all that stuff and put one of these back on leak was better but it was still there um so basically the best thing to actually do is either take this to a machine shop and have them true all these up or just by that time you know we're we're just got us a new manifold to put on here that way we don't uh you know i gave the customer those options they opt to just do this and just go ahead and replace that manifold. I mean, it's five, six hundred dollars or something, but it uh, ensures it should ensure everything is is uh, good, you know. So we're just going to go through here and clean up all of, of these and just start reassembling this thing, and we'll go from there. All right, folks, we just got uh, through taking this thing for a drive and everything, and now it's just sitting here. We don't have any more uh, squealing going on or nothing like that. I remember all it took was this thing just sitting here and right now you can't you can't hear it um, which I never knew these things did anything when they were uh, idling anyhow but apparently they do. You can, you can hear a little bit of difference you probably won't hear it. I don't know if you can hear that tone or not. Let's close the window. you can hear it but obviously before it was way pronounced um so yeah it was just a leak in that manifold you know and the how those gaskets kind of are you know they're metal and they got a few different layers and stuff um it's kind of like i don't know if you ever did when you were a kid you used to take the blade of grass hold it between your two fingers and blow on it and uh, make a high-pitched kind of squealing sound i mean that's that's literally what's going on so this one's all uh fixing everything with new um uh, manifold and new gaskets and all that stuff so uh, anyways hopefully this helps you out some so thanks for watching